What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Let's get it. I don't think we have beaten the vegetable <gasps> thing to death enough. So, we have a new guest on the show, another carnivore advocate. Welcome to the show, Anthony Chaffee. I think I'm saying that right. We were learning in my cancer biology class that Brussels sprouts had 136 known carcinogens. White mushrooms had over 100. Spinach, kale, lettuce, celery, cabbage, cucumber, broccoli, we, everything. Uh, we literally are giving pages with the, with the name of the produce and the number of identified carcinogens, page after page after page. It wasn't a single no. one. I looked and I was like, okay, what's the lowest number here? Yeah. It wasn't a single one under 60. I'm like, this is nuts. Everyone say it with me. The dosage makes the poison. Apparently he skipped toxicology class. So I can do the same thing with meat. Polyaromatic hydrocarbons, heme iron, heterocyclic amines, NEU, 5GC, nitrates, the list goes on and on. Known carcinogens, which in tiny amounts do f all, okay? If only we had human studies looking at whether people who eat more Brussels sprouts, kale, whether or not they get higher rates of kale. Oh wait, we have those. Not only do they show that people who eat these foods do not have higher rates of cancer, they actually show that there's a protective effect. His claim, and I don't know if he ever came right out and claimed it, but it's certainly what he's alluding to, that these foods are carcinogenic. These studies cannot exist. They cannot be true for this claim to be true. And people want to say, right, yep, yep. food industry, like oh yeah, president. yeah. Like, big broccoli, all right, big no, vegetable, I'm a, I'm a lobbying Congress. Listen, some of my research was funded by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, not a lot of it. I was funded by the National Dairy Council, I was funded by the Egg Nutrition Center, and to a very small extent by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. If I got a bias towards anything, it's animal protein. Do you know how much lobbying the animal industry does? They do tons. If you want to say, well, you can't trust these studies, because that's always the next go-to. It's always the next go-to whenever I directly disprove it. Well, you can't trust these studies, because it's funded by big insert whatever. The stuff that you like, also fun stuff. When you are a zealot, when you are bought in 100% and you only look at there's one way of eating or vegetables are toxic, you, you cannot be logically consistent. You can't. It's impossible, which is why they all have the same protocol, which is I'm going to cite some science to support what I'm saying without giving you the whole picture and definitely without citing the human randomized control trials or the human studies, then when I come back with those, they're gonna say, you know, research isn't perfect and funding. So now they're trying to discredit research overall. And then when I bring that logic in, what they all fall back to, and it doesn't matter whether they're carnivore, vegan, fasting, low carb, all the zealots fall back to the same thing. Look at all these people who have improved X condition by eating this way. That's called anecdote. And once again, I can find that anecdote for every opposing zealot cult group. Whose anecdote are we gonna weigh? Listen, if you like eating a certain way, that's totally fine. Anthony, you don't like eating vegetables? Maybe they make your tummy ache or something? I don't know. Cool, if you choose to omit, then omit. Don't tell people that they're carcinogenic when they're not, very obviously not, based on the research. And so many people are like, well, vegetables cause me inflammation. Do you measure your CRP? You measured your IL-6? No. You eat vegetables and you get a tummy ache and you assume that that's systemic inflammation. Not the same thing. Some people have GI distress with certain types of vegetables. That is true. Especially people who have FODMAP sensitivities. For those people, reducing the intake or eliminating certain vegetables can make them feel better. And many of these folks, when they go on a carnivore diet, do feel better because a carnivore diet is what's called a type of elimination diet. But the goal of elimination diets is not to stay on the elimination diet. It's to get your symptoms under control so that once they're under control, you can start adding back in foods one at a time and see what you tolerate versus not. So those of you who are on the carnivore diet who have found relief for some of your GI symptoms, just try adding back in one fruit or vegetable at a time and see what you tolerate. And you very quickly will see what gives you problems versus what does it? And when you say, well, vegetables cause you to get bloated, no sh Like, why do you think that they're good for satiety? Because they cause you to feel bloated and full. Some of you guys mistake fullness for like, I don't know, some kind of like clinical condition. It's okay to be full. So again, if you felt relief from a carnivore diet, cool. Try adding back in vegetables one at a time, and I bet you will find certain vegetables and fruits that you tolerate just fine. They're not toxic. They're not causing you inflammation. You're just having GI distress. Some of you have IBS. Some of you have a FODMAP sensitivity. Those are all things that can be managed. It doesn't mean you need to eat only meat the rest of your life. And that's all I got to say about that.